Good morning, church. Um, both David and I have a word for you today, uh, but of course, it's ladies first. And so here I go. As I was reflecting on what to talk to you about, I felt the, the Lord quietening me, almost like he was telling me to be still. A bit difficult when the whole point is to speak. Uh, but then I got what the Lord was saying, and so it's with a gentle, quiet spirit that I bring a word for you today. I've read this quote, I don't know if you've heard it, it's that you do not see the world as it is, you see it as you are. Don't see the world as it is, but as you are. So, if that's true, I thought, how then do I see the world? Um, I see myself as not having all the answers, that's for sure. Not sure what to believe on the news and so grateful um, that all that's going on is in God's hands and not mine. The more bad news that comes, the more I lean into the sovereignty of God and that's my safe place. I don't know actually how people cope who are facing all the uncertainty that there is in the world at the moment and have to, to make decisions on their own and have to rely on their own strength. They have no saviour of the world in their corner, and that must be very stressful. You know, I can't remember when I wasn't part of a home group or a ladies group or didn't attend church. I have so missed getting together with fellow believers. Of course, the negative for me is that one can get some kind of like an identity in, in the doing of these things, and we all know where our identity should be. So there has been, uh, for me, a lot of stripping away of the former things in my life. And I've come out of it with nothing but just me. Uh, and in the process, I have felt God drawing me away to himself. Mark chapter 6, verse 31 says, Come away with me. Let us go to a quiet place and rest for a while and there's another scripture that i love in the song of solomon arise my love my beautiful one and come away and that's really what i've done in um, this lockdown period uh, in the coming away from the world i've come away with jesus we as a family as you know have faced our giants recently um, but even though there were moments of trauma, I could really feel God's reassurance and him saying, it's going to be okay. We could see his hand in so many of the little miracles that occurred along the way and even before the time. And of course, that's one of the benefits of living out this life we have hand in hand with Jesus. We get to have history with him. And when we come away then with him, we get to reflect and to remember all the many times where we couldn't see the answer. And yet, eventually, there it was. The answer did come. And it takes times like this to reflect on these things. And it's important to do this so that when trouble comes, we can remember and we can take heart. We can remember those times that God never left us. I personally believe that this pandemic is from the pit of hell. It doesn't reveal itself just like Satan does sometimes. And just when we think we may have understood it, there's another strain or the, the symptoms differ so widely and sometimes there's no symptoms. Uh, people have stopped being able to go to churches. Uh, you can't even hug a friend or have a meal with someone. And it's isolated us from each other and uh, as you know, people are fearful and uh, feeling depressed. It has the mark of Satan all over it. Satan, you see, has power here on earth. It's a limited power, but he still is at work. But even though it may feel overwhelming at times, we are of a kingdom that is not of this world. It is an invisible kingdom, not always acknowledged by those around us. But in that we belong to this kingdom, we come under Christ's authority. Nothing can happen to us that hasn't been okayed by Jesus. And so, 
as a child of God living out my life in his kingdom, what is my response to this virus? Well, two responses came to mind. Firstly, I've just finished reading a book about King Hezekiah. He was a great king. He did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, just as his ancestor David had done. You can read about his story in 2 Kings, starting at chapter 18. And I suggest you do, it's a really great read. During the 14th year of his reign, the king of Assyria came to attack Judah. And when Hezekiah received the report of what was happening, he didn't panic or go to his advisors or rush out and do something silly. No, we read about what he did in 2 Kings 19 verse 1. When uh, King Hezekiah heard this report, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and went into the temple to pray. This happens time and time again through Hezekiah's reign. As the bad news came in, his first thought is to seek God. Sackcloth speaks of his attitude, which is one of humility and grief. I've learned so much how to uh, Hezekiah dealt with his problems in what we are facing. And therefore, when we hear of friends that aren't well or businesses that have closed or someone who's in hospital, the response is sadness and humility. After all, what do we know? And then David and I pray. The difference between Hezekiah's prayers of the Old Testament and our prayers under the New Covenant is that we don't have to beg and plead. We don't have to pray for victory in our situation. We pray from a position of victory. Satan, after all, was defeated at the cross. Prayer is a weapon given to us by God. It's not just a thing to do if I feel like it. Aren't you outraged at the destruction Satan is causing? If you are, is it causing you to run to the Lord, to fall to your knees and to pray? So church, pray like your life's at stake, your family's life, and pray from a place of victory, but pray. My second response to the pandemic is 1 Corinthians 13, verse 13. We all know it. And now these three things remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Interesting, isn't it? That the greatest is, uh, that love is greater than faith. Could it be that love leads to faith and that leads to hope? Or is it because God is love? Is that why? something to think about. The greatest of these is love. Do you think we can muster up this love? Let's face it, it's not always our default, is it, to just love. But there is a way for love to top all else in your life. And I've hinted at it in what I've already said. It's by coming away with Jesus and receiving this perfect love from him. He is pouring it out to us constantly. And so when we are in his presence and we receive and are filled by his love and from that place of being filled, of being filled we can overflow and let that love pour out and wash out over those around us. So yes, it's possible for the greatest of these to be love and very likely if you first come away with your heavenly father and then like a river flow out reach out to the in love to those around you i'd like to end by asking you to let your actions your thoughts your responses your reaching out to be governed by love would you love first i love what jock said last week about what happens to your heart when the heat is on? Does it dry up or does it melt? Choose to let your heart melt and run to the Father. Do you know that when you love, God's kingdom comes and his will is done on earth 
as it is in heaven. And with that in mind, I'd like to end now and let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Won't you pray with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen, church. And now David's going to just follow on from the foundation I've laid uh, with his views on the lockdown. God bless you all and lots of love.